The glory of God. Amen. Amen. And we are called to influence the glory of God. Because I'm going to tell you, when we were doing praise and worship, all God kept dealing with me about was, he kept taking me back to his objective. I don't know what this thing about God's objective. He was just dealing with me about his objective. And while we were doing praise and worship, he took me back to his objective. And he was saying that, you know, the objective of salvation the objective of salvation is to, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, God, your objective to salvation. And we know that, that the objective of salvation is to save, but it is to save. Why? For the wrath to come. And, and God really wants his sons and daughters to understand this. That salvation is salvation. It is saving. When Noah built the ark, he built the ark, but he built the ark understanding that there was something coming. Amen? Wow. And, and, and we need to grasp the whole this because I think so what happened in Satan, and I said it before God been saying this, if his, his desire is to change the objective of salvation, if you change the objective of salvation, and you think salvation is about you getting saved, getting married, getting a husband, and these things, then you can find yourself thinking you're saved, but you're out of position. And you're not doing what God is desiring you to do because you don't understand that salvation to be salvaged, what you got saved because there is something coming. Amen. God is building to prepare for something coming. Everybody with me? God is building, preparing for something to come. Now, I want to look at this for a minute. I want you to, we're going to look at this. We, we have to grasp this because if you don't grasp this, let me tell you what happens. If you and I don't understand that the salvation is to rescue, that's why he said, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. He said, don't let me find you out of position. He said, and then he'll say stuff like this. When he comes, will he find any in faith? Why do you think he's saying stuff like this? He said, when I come, shall I find any in faith? What is he saying? He said, will I find any understanding the full objective of what I was doing? Will I find anyone? Because you see, Satan, and, and, and Satan knows that, that God is building, but you see, if he gets you, it, then it's kind of funny because in the day of Lot, man, come on, it was eight people only in that boat. Eight people out of millions of people are on the land, but it was only eight people that understood the, the objective of that ark. That, that, that the ark was a place of being saved, but if you only think about being saved and not the objective of it, then you won't find yourself being prepared. Amen? You will begin to take, and I'm going to tell you, watch this, y'all watch what's happening. You will begin to take your sal salvation and become a Lucy Daisy. You begin to think that you're saved and that there's no significant reason for it. There's nothing, and you become Lucy And then what happens with most people who don't understand the full objective of God being saved, they find themselves lacking the ability to stay in position. Because if I know why somebody's doing something, and it, then I know to prepare. The news reporters don't tell you a storm is coming for no reason at all. Can I get an amen? amen? The news reporters have a twofold message for the storm. They're telling you that destruction is coming. Why? So you get a, get a position to be saved. I don't understand. It's like we hear the word of God today, but we don't believe it's for no other reason other than what? To serve ourselves. And that's deception. That's deception. And so God is saying, I want you to let my people know that, that I have a, an objective. That, that in their salvation, I'm, 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 I saved them to, to be in a position to understand that there is something coming. Uh, and God said, I've been building, I've been building, I've been talking to you about building. And what's funny about when you understand God's objective, you understand a journey. When you understand objective, you understand journey. Why? Because the children of Israel were on a journey, but God had an objective. Come on, y'all got to get what I'm saying. The children of Israel had a, God told, he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, there is a place that, I, 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 when Abraham came out of the world, I'm going to say the world, because when he came out of the world, which when he left his mother and father who were in sin, he said, I'm going to take you to a place, a land where milk and honey flowing. I'm going to take you to a place where, he was taking them to a promise, a promise. He was taking them to a promise. So Abraham was on a journey. And on the journey, Abraham did not get locked in to the places they were going through because the places that they were going through were going to begin to reveal to those who were locked into the promise. 
to those who were locked into what God was actually doing. So God has us on the, how many of y'all got to understand this? God has his sons and daughters down here on a journey. And his sons and daughters understand God's objective. They understand that he saved them and that he's building something, but they understand why. Because if they don't understand why, then it wouldn't really be that important to get in the ark if you don't understand why. That wouldn't really be important to come out of Sodom and Gomorrah if you don't understand why. See, if God be a liar, then you can stay in Sodom and Gomorrah because guess what? When the angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah, they came to find if anyone was righteous. And they didn't find. So they, what they did is they pulled Lot out by the prayer of Abraham because God, they knew what was coming. They knew that judgment was coming. There was amazing about the church today. Do we understand God's objective? And do we understand what is coming? And see, what's interesting about it is when you get tied and connected to down here, you're being deceived. You're being deceived. When you're walking around and depressing, you walk around aggravated back down here, that's because you don't have a clue what's actually coming. Because watch this, if I understand the objective is to be saved from that which is to come, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to be doing a couple of things. One thing I'm going to be doing is preparing. And the second thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make sure that everybody should be getting out the way. Should know it what is to come. Amen? Now you won't look crazy and you might look crazy to everybody else. Why? Because they don't understand the objective. But you, look at somebody say, but you have been awakened. So I want to show you what it look a little bit like and go in certain places. So let's go to Isaiah 56 for a minute. Because I need to show you what God is doing. And I want to, God wants to show us what he's doing and, and kind of give us an understanding. I'm going to have to go ahead. Read Isaiah 56 from the first verse. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Go ahead. Keep ye judgment and do justice. Okay. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. He says, I want you to know my salvation is near to come and my righteousness is to be revealed. It's interesting when the salvation comes, the salvation is connected to his righteousness. Somebody should have screamed on that alone. His salvation is connected to his what? Righteousness. Righteousness. So when there's salvation, how many of you know that, eight, that Noah was considered a right standing with God? Y'all yeah, know that, right? He found Noah, and Noah was, he, he, now remember this, now Noah was righteous for the time that was in. Everybody understand, right? And Noah was righteous in God, but he was also revealing, the, in building the ark, he was building the salvation of God. Y'all better get that. So the salvation and the righteousness is connected. That's why we as the sons and daughters of God, but in what, in what God is building, we're going to see God. You and I are going to see God, his righteousness and his salvation. When you begin to accept Christ, not only are you going to begin to inherit his righteousness, but you're going to reveal his Salvation. Wow. Not only are you going to inherit, I'm sorry, let me reverse that. Not only are you going to inherit his salvation, but you're going to reveal his righteousness. Amen? Amen? Amen. Keep on going. Verse 2. Blessed is the man that does this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Say, the man who keeps God's rest. Amen. How many you know that God's rest is in his word? Oh, y'all better say, God's rest is in his word. God, oh, say amen. amen. When you know that a word is true, you can find, right. wait, hold on. How many of you know, if you know that the news reporter, words are true, then you put yourself in a position of, right? 
You're not scared about the storm to come because you have prepared because you believe that the words are true. So because the words are true, you have found yourself in a position of rest. rest. See, you can bet on God's word. That's why I love what the young woman of God, when she was giving her testimony, she said, God, I trust you. Amen. And in trusting God, when you trust God, you find a place of rest. Rest. ceasing from your works. And trusting in God is well able to do what he said he's going to do. Wow. Because that's what he did on the Sabbath. When the Sabbath was established, he ceased from his works to rest. But his, well, I got this is so good. But his works were established by his word. Somebody don't get it. That's why he would say it was good. All things were created by the And on the seventh, he rests from his He can rest in his word. He can rest in all that he said that was good. You know what's funny about God? This is good. God created man in his image and his likeness. Can I get an amen? God was resting until he had a man, until he created, when he created man to rest up his rest place. Somebody said, what? Because how many know when man sinned, God says, hold up, now, now I, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fix this. Thank you. Amen? Amen? God says, I have to fix this. God has to fix this. So keep on going, because I gotta, I, I wanna get to my, I wanna get to what God will talk about today. Keep going. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Right. And keepeth his hand from doing any evil. How many know, we, we don't wanna pollute the Sabbath. How do you pollute the Sabbath? You pollute the day of rest by inserting your own ideal of rest. You pollute something by altering it. Wow. You pollute it by altering. How do you pollute the word? When you begin to find another person. Samson polluted the word because instead of resting in God's word, he rested on the line of lap. Anybody got what I just said? Samson, who was called to be a judge, who was called to destroy his enemy and judge Israel, he was wrapped. He had the word of God who had empowered him to be a judge. He could rest in that word against his enemy. Why? Samson was triumphing over his enemy. Why? Because he was resting in the word of God that raised him up. But when Samson started resting his head in Delilah's lap, Delilah found his strength place. He found, he found his place of strength and when Samson got up, because he gave up his place of rest, he found himself in bondage and blind. When you start moving from the word of God, you can't see no more and you're in bondage. When you start trying to do it in your own strength, now you can't see and now you're bound up. Because you don't have the power to do what God can do or what God has done. My Bible says he goes before you and he makes the crooked road straight. I always tell you, let me ask y'all this, God is the light of what? He is the light of the world, right? He is the light of the world. Let me give you an example. If God is the light of the world, then let me ask, when you start putting your priorities before God, you put your priorities before light. And if light is not in front of you, then how are you going to be able to see where you're going? Some of us, you couldn't see where you were going when you picked your way. You couldn't see where you were going when you went to that job. Wow. You couldn't see where you were. So what? when you can't see where you're going, you start moving by your feelings. Amen. You start moving by your feelings. And how many you know, a lot of times your feelings had you grabbing on things you thought was one thing, but it was something else. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. That's why the Bible says he go before you. He says the light go before you to make it a crooked road straight. I'll be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. He said, let me, let my word be. When Peter stepped out the boat, he stepped out on the word. And the word can step, the word can cause you to walk in the supernatural. Hallelujah. But as soon as he took his eyes off the light, he began to seek on the thing he walked in. Y'all better get this. As soon as you take your eyes off the word, you begin to seek on the thing you're looking at. The thing that you the thing that you would have been able to walk through now begins to overtake you. But as long as Peter stayed his eyes on Jesus, the word, he would have had the power to walk through a storm. Some of us, the reason why we are struggling through a storm, you need to check where your eyes are locked on. You need to check on who's guiding you. Come on, can we get an amen? amen? Some of us got fear guiding you. Some of us, you got people guiding you. 
Some of us you got your emotions guiding you. But my Bible says that the Spirit leads you. Amen. Amen? Amen. Keep on going. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. I want you to know that God, let somebody say, God is prophesying. Remember, this is the Lord speaking. He is using Isaiah to prophesy about what is to come. He's using Isaiah to prophesy that they're going to be a people joining with a people. Keep going. Verse 4. Uh -huh. For thus says the Lord unto the units that keep my Sabbath, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. I want y'all to get that. To the unit that keep my Sabbath, and choose the things that please me, and hold on to my covenant. Everybody say, hold on. Hold on. He said, Without faith, it's impossible to what? Please You can't please them without faith if they come by what? Hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. So the word is the place of what? Faith. Say rest. 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 When God speaks something, you can find rest in what he spoke. Amen? Amen. Amen. When, you, when God speaks, that's, that's why no matter what you're going through, God, I need to hear from you. I need you to talk. Like the woman of God, when she was giving her testimony, she said, you know what, I didn't say anything. I saw her in homosexuality. I saw this going on, but I allowed God to lead me because I understand that God can speak a word and resolve all this situation. Amen. I can say something. I can say this and say that, but I needed God to lead me because my Bible says, my Bible says he watches over his word. He didn't say he watches over mine. He said he watches over his. And God knows how to speak an on-time or an on-time situation. Amen. Amen. Because see, God knows how to break you to the place where you can receive. Amen. And since we and since we only looking at the outside, and the Bible says God looking at the heart. See, you looking at the heart outside. You can't tell when somebody ready to be changed by the outside. But God looking at the place that's being broken. He looking at the bottom ground that's being broken. He so that ground be prepared to receive a seed that brings a transformation. Amen. 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 See, everybody in this room, you called on God because why? God begin one man water, one man plant, but God is the one that breaks up the ground and causes it to begin to increase. Amen. Look at somebody say, God break you up. God break you up. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Somebody rejoice in the body. Keep on going. Verse 5. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. Hey, Amen. Keep on going. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Keep on going. Also, the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Even one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taking hold of my covenant. Amen. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Uh huh. Go ahead. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted unto mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Now, let's see. This house is called a house of prayer for who? All people. But they have to do what? They have to find, they have to find rest in the word that establishes the covenant. Wow. It is God's word that creates the covenant. Wow. <laughs> How many of you know what I'm saying? God's word creates the covenant. An agreement. When you got the, the covenant is established on God's word. The promise is established by God's word. And that's the covenant. So God is about understanding that God's a covenant. So God is a covenant God. God is a covenant God. And he makes covenant through his word. He said, those who come, but how many of y'all know that God is talking about unifying the people? He's talking about bringing the people together in his house in prayer. But what brings them together is the word and the word that establishes the covenant. Y'all with me? Say, God is, say right here, God is building. Keep going. 
verse 8. Mm -hmm. The Lord God, which gathered the outcasts of Israel. So he gathered the outcasts of Israel. Said. Said what? Yet will I gather others to him. He said, I'm prophesying to you that I'm going to, he said, I'm prophesying to you that that's going to come one that's going to gather the outcasts of Israel, but don't gather others too. God already, God always had a plan for Cain. Yeah. Ah, somebody going to get that. He always had a plan for Cain. That's why when he said, when Cain said, they gonna, when you're going to be a bad man, he said, they're going to kill you. God says, no, I pray for you. They're not going to kill you. and shift that and begin to have her trust God to shift that and let her mother know this atmosphere got to change. Amen. One was in an atmosphere where she grew up and saw homosexuality and all the women in her family and all that is what, what, I'm going to tell you something. What happened in her family? There was eventually a woman that was broken. Wow. Who has now created a standard of brokenness in their family. How many of you know that one person in your family could change the whole generation of your family? Amen. And God, is, what was God talking about through the testimonies? Shift the atmospheres. Being moved out of an atmosphere of destruction and trusting God to shift the atmosphere to save your soul. Amen. People's souls will be transformed and saved by the shifting of atmospheres. One young girl now is walking with the mindset on how to be a doctor because there was a shifting of atmospheres. One person is no longer indwelling in homosexuality. She has broken the curse because God shifted the atmosphere. One young lady will be now saved from anger and delivered from the anger. Her daughter is going to have to go for a continuous anger out because God is shifting the atmosphere. When God shifts the atmosphere, it changes a whole environment. Hallelujah. And God is saying, I need you to understand. He says, and, 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 and Isaiah 56, he says, we're not doing Place. Thanks to 
began to happen. Watch this. Go ahead. Yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. Go ahead. All ye beasts of the field. Uh oh. I say, uh oh. Uh -oh. When God is building, the enemy is preparing. Come on, say it. Make it play. Come on. God is saying discipleship university, where we labor that Christ be formed in you. When God is building that which he is doing, he just told you, I'm calling the people that was there. I'm building one body. You ever say one body? One body. He said, I'm calling. He said, if my house is for all people, I'm bringing everybody together under my covenant, under my promise, in a place of rest. I mean, the church is supposed to be a place of rest of the people of God. Amen. He says, but there's beasts in the field. Read it. All ye beasts mm -hmm. of the field. Yes. Come to devour. What do beasts come to do? Devour. While God is building, y'all got we got to get the revelation of this tonight. God is building right now. Thank you. And the enemy is pursuing to what? Devour. That is his nature to kill, steal, and destroy. But God says in Isaiah 56, I want you to know I'm prophetically declaring to you what is going on now. See, you know the problem with church? We've been going to church so long and church has changed its objective that now you go to church to find out what you want instead of what God is doing. So now church becomes a shock in your vein for an emotional hype instead of a transformation of your life to get out of position. Of that which is to come. Mm. No, because if if you knew what it was all about, you know, I, I, I saw the, I saw the deception in this. Uh, I was watching. My wife told me about it, but then I went and watched it for myself. Deidre Hatton was being interviewed by um, what's it? Nick, what's Nick Ken. Nick Ken, right? <laughs> Deidre had gonna let Nick Cannon interview him. Nick Cannon. Okay. Good. You might say you can't. No. He said you'll know the body of fruit. Ain't nothing to say about Nick Cannon. Wow. But Nick Cannon admires Deidre Hatton's lack of ability to be sanctified. Because Deidre Hatton is not sanctified. He is being used by Satan to say that you can mix that which is holy. And let me tell you what Deidre Hatton kept, let me tell you what Nick Cannon kept saying to Deidre Hatton. He kept admiring his gift. Not his life. Because his life looked like garbage. But his gift looks impressive. Yeah, I know. I know this is not going to be the power, but I'm going to preach the gospel anyway. Because he is applauding DJ Hatton's ability to be real. But I thought being real was being able to walk in the word of God. I thought being real means to be a doer of a word, not just singing. Because my Bible tells me faith with God works is dead. Amen. Now watch this, watch this. And this what let me tell you what the can say here. This is what he said. He said, I like you. Because you understand. See, the world like you. Why? Because you understand. It's about, you know, people coming to the church and getting hyped up with the music. This is what he said to go listen to yourself. They get hyped up with the music. And watch this. And they can go out and they can feel good and feel good when they come to church and then go out and live their life. God is not about you feeling good. God is about you being transformed. Amen. He is still a holy God. He is still looking for salvation and righteousness. Sanctification. The my Bible says 
Now can you help me out? He says, you are sanctified through my word. My word is true. He said, Lord, I was not of the world. Read John, read John 17. He says, I sanctified myself that you may have an example that you could be in the world, but not of the world. It is not a good thing to say you can serve God and he has no power to transform you. I'm not saying be fake. God desires truth and inward parts. But the truth is God's ability to transform you. If he can't transform you, then what's the purpose? Because without being transformed, y'all better get this right here. Without being transformed, you still reap the harvest from your deeds. Say, what, what do you mean? Let me give you an example. If I don't get transformed and I still am bed in sin, even though I say I'm saved, the sin that I still bathe in creates an atmosphere for people to see me and not see God. And it's in the scripture, what does the scripture say? That he said to Israel, you have made my name as a reproach among the Gentiles. The unsaved don't believe that you have to be holy no more. The unsaved doesn't believe that God has the power to transform your life to be different anymore. The unsaved do not believe. All they believe you just say God, and the unsaved now believes just be hyped. And they believe now that you have a gift. Your gift is what impresses, but you got the witness of you can't deceive God in your gift. He knows your heart. Uh, some of them don't like what I'm saying. But let me give you the scripture. They said, Lord, we prophesied in your name. They said, Lord, we did many wonders in your name. He said, I never knew you. Why? I never had your heart. You did it that you might be seen. You wanted fame. You wanted glory. And you used your gifts to glorify you. You said me. Oh, they think it's something new. Let me give you more scripture. The vineyard, he lived out the vineyard. He said, here's the vineyard. He gave it to some people. Gave them authority. When he lit the vineyard, he said, let me send my son to go get the fruit from the vineyard. Watch this. There are those who have the vineyard. Says, if we kill the people, the prophets, if we kill the ones we can have it for ourselves. It's nothing new that people want to use Jesus' name to get glory for themselves. Oh, I know. Right. See, what am I talking to you about? The beast in the field. See, you think the beast in the field is something that's going to come with horns in his head. You think the beast in the field is going to come with a red jacket on and say, oh, I'm the beast in the field. But what you and I must understand that Satan's greatest weapon now is the weapon of deception. The Bible says that he's going to come, uh, he's going to dress up like a sheep. The Bible says he's going to come up dressed up like a light, but he's going to tell you that you don't have to live holy. He's going to tell you that you don't have to be righteous. He's going to tell you that the word of God is not really important. Watch this. Okay. 
He says, all ye the beasts of the field come to devour. Yes, all ye beasts of the field, forest. But how they get in? Read verse 10. Yes, yes. Verse 10. His watchmen are blind. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. His what? His watchmen are blind. You know why they blind? Because they look into their own desires too. His watchmen can't see because they have built in, they have what? Built in, they have conceived a doctrine that is about self-service. They have conceived the wrong doctrine. They have conceived a doctrine that has not the objective of God. What's God's objective? To save from the wrath to come. Okay, I'm just gone. He said, he said, the watchmen, the prophets, the sealers, they can't see no more. Oh, I see. At least I got one woman to go with me. But what happened to the watchmen? Look at what I'm saying. They laid their head, head. in Delilah's lap. Let me help us out tonight. <laughs> Don't worry about Jezebel. Because we're in the time of Delilah. Because see, Delilah was one that appealed to your flesh. Uh, Delilah said stuff like, if you love me, Delilah purpose was to take you from your strength. Delilah purpose was to stop you from building. Delilah purpose, see Delilah was hired. Delilah, y'all gotta get this. Delilah was hired to stop Samson from destroying the enemy. Delilah would take you off the point of destroying the beast. Delilah will cause you and she will always she will stroke your ego. Delilah struck his ego. And Delilah kept him saturated in pleasure. Pleasure, there you go. Wow. Jezebel won't just control you. Delilah controlled you by keeping you saturated in anything. Come on now, y'all. She kept him saturated. She put it on him, boy. She kept him saturated in the pleasure of his flesh. She kept, she had days. They must have been funky, too, because you read the story. It's like he was in there for days. Just, just, I mean, just, Delilah just, just Delilah must have been something else, too, boy. Delilah must have been the top grade of G5. <laughs> Delilah, Delilah was so powerful that she would play with him and say, where your strength at? She would say, she would say anything here. Right. And then watch this. Delilah was so powerful that when you lied to her, she made you feel guilty. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wow. Come on. That's so Delilah created such a righteousness within herself that when you lied to her, she made you feel guilty. Why won't you tell me the truth? You don't love me. Why you don't tell me where your strength is? Tell me how I can destroy you. Delilah will have you stop praying. And let me tell you something about Delilah. Delilah loves entertainment. She loves entertainment. Because while you're so full of entertainment, you can't go to war. Woo. There you go, come on. There you go. Finish reading this because I got this in my point. Go ahead. He said, The watchmen have, are blind. Go ahead. His watchmen are blind. Mm -hmm. They are all ignorant. They what? Ignorant. Ignorant. Ignorant, they say, ignorant means they lack. I gotta get this. Y'all please gotta get this. Ignorant means they lack the knowledge of what was really going on. So, how many know this? If you are a seer and you don't know what God is doing today, you are ignorant. Yes, yes. Means you lack the knowledge. If you are a prophet or you are a seer and you can't see 
that God is building today. And that the enemy is approaching. It's the, why? Because when you're ignorant, you can't see. And if you can't see, you can't preach from a place you don't know. Yes, yes. Amen. So you'll preach from a place where you feel. You know, the last thing you want is an ignorant news reporter. <laughs> we don't really know where the storm's going. Okay, frustrating. Amen. <laughs> okay, amen. Somebody with me. Yeah. I knew this message. God, this, my, this message is going to give somebody a breakthrough. My God would never have preached it. But it's going to give people preparation. Go ahead. He said, they, in, they are, watch this, go ahead. They are all dumb dogs. That cannot bark. Cause Lisa dog will tell you what. The, uh, Lisa, my dog, you know that. So she. <laughs> it's not wrong, my dog. But we praying for her. <laughs> but one thing I know about my dog is, <laughs> anybody in my neighborhood know this? You ain't gonna walk up to my door without us knowing. Am I right, baby? She gonna. What about a dog? At least they should let you know something coming. Alert. If God is building. Your dog, the watchman, should let, be letting us know. But the Bible says, if we don't believe it, I know some of y'all don't believe it. Some of y'all don't like what I said. But I didn't say it. The dog is supposed to let you know that somebody's about to rob you. To alert you. But he said, they dumb dogs. They don't open their mouth. And God has used the remember now, go back. I want y'all to study everything we're gonna talk about tonight. Because I'm telling you, it's prophetically. In the, the whole first part of Isaiah 56 is God building his kingdom about God bringing two and making one new man. Isaiah 56 is being played out in Ephesians 2. Mm, okay. If you read Ephesians 2, you will see Isaiah 56. Mm. Where he made where he took the two and made one new man. Well, God took the Gentile and the Jew and made one new man unto himself. It is being played out. But what is God? And what God is building, say, look, say, God is building me. God is building me. Look at something, God is building me. God is building me. But I want you to know, they're all the beasts in the field are coming in. Wow, wow. Oh, Lord. The problem, man of God, is that, I, I got to say it again. We all know the beast is handsome. <laughs> <laughs> the beast is cute. <laughs> the beast said, You don't have to go to church today. I cooked you dinner. <laughs> and it's your favorite. <laughs> Remember when we were talking last week? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said you like macaroni and greens and with, a, with some baked beans and some ribs and a, guess what in a side cup of pink lemonade oh, I like it <laughs> <laughs> I'm all your time. but why did you cook the meal at the time why was it at the same time that I ate to go hear the word yeah. 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 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday Say, he has 
given me power. afraid of something that's afraid of you. Amen. Have you ever saw a dog and you started taking off one you behind, he ran to you like, oh, oh, then you want to get mad now, oh, you better run. <laughs> Come on, y'all have that like I ain't never seen that. Yeah. It's like they were about to take off, you saw it, you know like, oh, then you get all brave. He was afraid of you. Amen. My Bible says, God cannot lie. He says, I have given you power over all the works of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. John 17 prayed this. Jesus prayed this and it cannot return void. He said, I will keep them from the evils. He said, I pray that you will be kept from the evil. Say, my soul is covered. My soul is covered. In Christ. I heard your boss say, in Christ. Say, in Christ. In Christ. Okay, keep reading. Keep reading. They are all dumb dogs, they cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Uh huh, they ain't they, they, Watch this. He building, and they sleeping. Slumber. God is building something, and people sleeping in slumber. God has told you his objective, and he's building, but we sleeping in slumber. You, we sleep in a slumber, and God says, I don't understand that the wrath is coming. Wow. Come on, man. It's the, the wrath coming. He said it's in the scripture. And we ought to know because we don't we, we don't see it twice. See, we seen it in Sodom and Gomorrah. We saw it in Noah. He said, I'm coming. He said, but they sleep in a slumber. Go ahead, keep reading. Verse 11. Uh, go ahead. Yea, they are greedy dogs. They're greedy dogs. Oh, but they, they, they don't bark, but they're greedy. <laughs> go ahead. Which can never have enough. They want more and more and more. They're not building what God told them to build, but they're greedy. And they want more and more and more. And they teach people to want more. And now, the Bible says contentment, but they say, no, you can have everything. So, they, so they, they raise people who are never satisfied, and when you're never satisfied, you can't really be about God's business, because why? You're sad, depressed, and oppressed all the time, because you don't have what you really want. Yeah. Oh, if I can have a camera or something, y'all looking at me, we just turn the camera. Da, 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 da. Okay. Go ahead. They are all shepherds that cannot understand. See, they are who? He said, these are shepherds who are ignorant. They don't understand. What don't they understand? What he talked about in the first couple of paragraphs. What God was doing. He's gathering and he's building his body. What, he, what is that? What, what, what are shepherds going to? Ephesians 4, Ephesians 2, everything. Jesus Christ came to build. He is the head and we are the 
and he is building the place of salvation. He is building the, the man of God said in the song, you must be in Christ. You must be in Christ. The same way you had to be in the ark. Amen. The only way you're going to be saved and be in a place of safety, it don't matter what the walls you're in. You better be in Christ. It don't matter if you're a Baptist, you better be in Christ. It don't matter if you're a Catholic, you better be in Christ. It don't matter if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you better be in Christ. It don't matter if you're white, you better be in what? Christ. It don't matter if you're red, you better be in what? Christ. It don't matter if you're black, you better be in what? Christ. Finish me. He said, Yes, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. Read the last paper. They are all looking to their own way. Every shepherd looking to build their own thing. Wow. Their own way. When God is looking to build his body in a kingdom, we look to build our own thing. Greedy. It's about us. Now, let me tell you what's going on. You are shepherd. You're not, your power is not if you are anointed in Christ today. Your power is based on the magnitude of your church. Your power now is based upon if you have many, many members. Well, I guess Jesus wouldn't have had no power. Because at the end, well, they got people straight hanging. At the end, if you look at Jesus' church about when he initially left, he would have had a storefront. 120 people. And when Jesus had the multitude following him, every time, he, it, the closer he got to the, his objective, the closer he got to the purpose of God, the, the closer he got to the journey he was going, the less people that would follow. He said, he even told him once, he said, you follow me because your stomach is full. What was he saying? You follow me for your personal gain. You don't follow me understanding what I came for. You don't follow me understanding what I came to do. You follow me understanding what you want. He said, but I came to save you from the wrath to come. And you being full or being empty is not going to save you. You walking or lame is not going to save you. You being blind or your eyes are open is not going to save you. Saving is you believing in what I did on that cross. For there is no greater love. Because watch this. If I say without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Your forgiveness came. Your forgiveness said, I was bought with a price. I was bought with a price. Say, I'm priceless. I'm priceless. Come on now. Because the Bible says that your price is more precious than silver. And you need to look at somebody and say, you don't even know what you got when I see beside you. Come on, look at somebody and say, you don't have a clue. No, look at them. They might not look at me. They, they may look at you one way, but let me tell you something. Look at the person next to you say, you don't understand. The, you don't understand the value of what you look at, what you're sitting next to. my value, my worth, 
if my worth is not in the position you gave me at church, though I do it because I know my worth. My worth is not in the title that you established me. I, I accept it because of my worth. See, he said, more precious. He said, you were purchased not with corrupt. Come on, somebody got to get He said, you were purchased with not corruptible things. See, I got to, because you, see, let me tell you something. When Noah was building the ark, he chose gopher wood. If I say gopher wood. They specifically, they specifically spoke about the tree. Why? Because every tree can't withstand a storm. Amen. See, God showed me this. I was on the second floor one day, and God had me look out. I saw palm trees. He said, son, I saw a specific type of tree. He said, because not every tree can withstand a storm. And God says, and when I, when I cut the tree down, and I took it from the midst of everybody else. And then he said, I began to smooth it out because why? It was a body thing. He said, I had to smooth it because if I didn't smooth it out, it would stack on top of each other. And come on, I'm talking about the body. I'm talking about the body. He said, I have to smooth you out. Why? Because if I don't smooth you out, then there'll be, there'll be openness in the body that, 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 that you'll sink. He said, what I'm building can't sink through the storm. What I'm building can't be overtaken by trials and tribulations. What I'm building cannot be destroyed by, 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 the, by the enemy. What I'm building has to be hidden, joined together, increasing itself in love. What I am building has to be hidden, joined together, increasing itself in love. And since love is the only thing that bears all, believes all, hopes all, endures all, love is the bar. It bar. It is a thing that causes something to, to be able to sink through. Love. Yeah. Not gifts, love. Because love is the only thing the Bible says it cannot fail. Yeah. So it is the model between the bottle between me and you, y'all. It's the model between what? It's the unbreakable force between me and Papa Barber that even when we get upset or whatever, it cannot, we cannot break apart because the bottle between us is the love of God. Yeah. That's what I'm building. It's the love of God. And Isaiah 56 he said, I'm God. He said, I'm born to get the strength. And I'm bringing it in my house to be called the house of prayer. He said, Peter, can you pray with me for a little while? Wow, because wow, something coming. Wow. Can you pray with me for a little while? Something to come in. But he says, Isaiah 56, I want to tell you what was happening. That's happening today. He said, the shepherds don't bark. The watchmen are asleep. And though, though God is building. The beast is now creeped into the church. And the beast is in the church. It can't be weak. They can't see it because it's dressed up like the preacher. It's dressed up like the deacon. It's dressed up like Sister Bobo. It's dressed up like the one who's in the church saying they serve God but still have their own agenda. Say, mm hmm. Some of them, go ahead. Go ahead. They are all looking to their own way, mm -hmm. everyone for his own gain mm -hmm. from his quarter. Mm -hmm. Everybody looking for their own thing to prosper. Everybody going, is it like this? Like we, everybody looking for their own thing to prosper. Everybody got their own ministry. <laughs> everybody got their own ministry. Looking for their own prosperity every quarter, making sure they gain. But my Bible says, y'all can rebuke me. My Bible says in Ephesians 4, he said, for the equipping of the saints, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. All right. I, I never found anything plural in there. Let me say it again. I didn't find anything plural. When Jesus said he gave some prophets, some evangelists, some teachers, he said for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Wow. That word says ministry. It didn't say ministries. Wow. Though we are all ministers to serve one ministry. Amen. What am I trying to say? Why? Because God has one objective. It don't matter what your ministry is. Your ministry does not change God's objective. What is God's objective? To save people, to save from the wrath to come. 
to save on the wrath to come. Amen. Amen. It don't matter what it is. If I ever get money, as long as I'm, as long as I'm in the ark, Amen. somebody gonna go with me. Amen. If I never get married, as long as I'm in the if I never see a million dollars, I'm gonna I'd like to see a million dollars. But if I never see one, as long as I'm in the and because I know my I know why I'm in the arm because of Jesus, and I know the purpose objective of it is the objective is there is wrath coming. When you run to one place, you're running because there's something else at another place. When people see you running, they ask you. When people see you running, they ask you, where are you going or why? Because they automatically assume that you're trying to get to one place from a, I'm running, I'm running late, I'm running from home to work. See, we don't forgot why he came. We don't think judgment is coming. But it's right there in the Bible. Matter of fact, it's in the epistles. They, when the Paul and the writer letter, they would always talk about the coming of Jesus and the wrath to come. He would say in the scriptures, don't be bound. Come out of her. And yet we preach as if salvation was to come out of her just to get everything she got. And stuff come out of her because why? It's gonna be a new Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Things that we know are not going to remain the same. I believe God. Amen. When they say peace, peace, I got to come out. Why? Because I know destruction is coming. Amen. We read the scriptures, and he says, in the latter days, these things, and we act like no. And we see plagues. And we see all these things, the beginning of sorrow, but watch this, but we change the objective, what objective? That it's about God saving, and we're not. we look at contrast, it's just something to happen. It's just life. But it was funny, in the beginning of sorrow and those wars, it's your time to be awakened to repent. How many of us found ourselves in a time of sorrow calling on Jesus? Oh, I'm the only one, huh? Okay. Let me finish this up. Go ahead, I'm, I'm, go ahead and finish it real quick so I can take it so we can bring this thing home. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. Come ye, say they. This is what they're going to say. This is, what, this, is what, this is what's being said today. Come on, y'all. Go ahead. I will fetch wine. I'm going to get you some wine. And we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And we're going to get, we're going to get, don't work with that. we're going to become unconscious. We're going to get to the place where we are unconscious to what God is doing. Come on, y'all. Get unconscious. Because watch this. When you are ignorant, you can't lead somebody to wake up. If I'm ignorant what's to come, I can't wake you up. If I don't know a storm coming, I can't wake you up. Amen. Somebody got to get this. If I don't believe that Jesus Christ is coming, I'm not trying to get you to believe it. That's true. If I don't believe that there's wrath coming, I'm not trying to get you to understand wrath coming. I'm not praying for you with urgency. I'm not fasting for you with urgency. Why? Because I really don't believe that there's one coming. I believe that every day is going to be the same. I believe, drink, let's have wine, let's get our houses. I believe that there will never be a day where the, drop, where the door will be closed and the rain come down. I believe that there will never be a day where we step out and the fire will come down. I don't believe that. I don't believe that's a part of God. You're preaching that bootleg gospel. You're preaching that gospel to try to scare people. No, that is the absolute truth according to the gospel. I know it's coming. Well, I've been illuminated. I've been awakened. And I was saved. And being saved, he revealed to me. Guess what? I have brought you into the body. Now, go get my people. Peter, do you love me? Go get my people. Why? You know what's coming. You know when I come back. If they are not
It's a category five or three. You're not worried about that Benz. You're not worried about that $5,000 suit or that Rolex. Because <laughs> a dead man can't drive. <laughs> a dead woman can't walk in your house. You worried about your soul, your life being a pl in a place of safe. Is there anybody getting what God is saying tonight? And if you are a child of God, and you are in the ministry, watch, watch, watch this, y'all can get this right here. He told his apostles, he said, there's only one ministry. Then he said, there's one ministry, right? And then he told what kind of ministry it was. He said, it's the ministry of reconciliation. He says, I've given you the ministry to build the body. But why are you building it? Because it's the ministry to reconcile them back to me. Why? Because if they're not reconciled back to me, they're going to be lost. Because I'm going to judge her. The scripture, he's going to judge her. He says, but they say, come on. Come on, y'all. We're going to get next year going to be the same. I'm going to come back next year. And I'm going to prophesy to you some more houses and cars. Come back next year. Keep looking for the same old prophecy about her. And why you going to fix it and wait for your prophecy? People dying all around. Yeah. Yeah. Lives are being lost every day. Don't nobody at your job even know you saved. People don't even know you. They, they don't even know you're a woman, a man, of God. You curse just like they curse. My God. Jesus. Matter of fact, our so-called gospel celebrities, the world loved them. Isn't it funny that God said they would not love you? But they love you. Come on. The world loves our gospel celebrities. They do. They, they absolutely love them. And our gospel celebrities, they admire the world for their gifts. Come on. Even when God told them not to. But they admire the world for their gifts. See, something that you admire, you're not going to pray for. Come on. Something that you admire, you're not going to intercede for. Because you think they already got it going on. But God says they lost. They did. But I, 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 I got to say, say, take us there. Say, take. So now he says, oh yeah, he say, finish reading. That's why. Because of ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. Isn't it funny that the gospel is no longer preparing for the coming? The gospel is no longer telling you to be out there. It's about tomorrow. Come on. Tomorrow. Tomorrow you won't have it going. The scripture says, let tomorrow take care of itself. Be busy today. Amen. Be busy about your father's business today. Amen. That's why he said, will I find anybody in faith? Will I find anybody believing what the word is saying? Ooh. Will I find anybody that has the urgency to see what's coming? But the watchmen are going to sleep. But the watchmen are going to sleep. But I want to take you to a certain place of a person who did not go to sleep. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Everybody, let's go to Nehemiah. We don't get See, for those who want to see Isaiah 56 in order, just go to the, go, go, go to Ephesians, read two and three, two to three to four. You're gonna see Isaiah 56. You're gonna see what God is building in his body. But the beasts are coming in. Say the beasts are coming in. The are coming in. Now, let's read. Let's read what God gave me. This is what God gave me when we're doing prayer. When, when, when the women of God, when they were praying actually on, on Tuesday, God dropped this in my spirit on Tuesday. He took said, go to Nehemiah. Now start reading the verse, first verse of Nehemiah. Go ahead. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. And it came to pass in the month of Chislu, in the 20th year. What year? The 20th year. What we at? 20th year. He said, tell him. He said, I'm always accurate. Amen. He said, in the 20th year. It's 2020, right? In a year, it's time to open your eyes. 
It's time to open your eyes and see what's going on in the 20th year. It's time for you to wake up and realize game time over. How many know God already has exposed America as a covenant-breaking nation? God has already revealed that America has broken covenant. He already has shown America his heart. America has said to God, we have evolved beyond your word. America says we have come to an evolution. Wow. We have evolved beyond your word. We, America has said to God, we don't want you in our school system. We don't want you in our criminal justice system. We don't want you in our family. We don't want you. The only time we want you is when we need something. Wow. And the only time we want you is when we feel like we can use you to blow us up. Amen. We don't want your love or your righteousness. We don't want your holiness. We don't even need your forgiveness. God says, America, you said, <laughs> I have come to an evolution. See, in this church, you don't hurt, I'm going to keep saying it until we get it in our spirit. When he used the president of a nation to decree something, it is not about the president, it's about the nation. And when the president of this nation said, I came to an evolution that men can marry men and women can marry women. Let me tell you what that means. Marriage is not about homosexuality, it's about covenant. You come on, come on, we gotta get it. We found out that God says, if you keep my covenant, covenant agreement. But America says we will not keep your covenant. We will marry who we want to. We will marry whoever we And if I don't feel like being a man, I'll call myself a woman. And, if I, and America has now told God, you are in error. We do not accept your word as truth. We accept our own truth. And we think that's an indictment against the unsaved when it's actually an indictment against the church. Because it is the church that's supposed to be the light of the world. Amen. That's true. But the church said, I don't want to be the light. I want to be sit down and interviewed by the world. Oh, Lord. And let the world be in agreement with me and admire my gift Amen. instead of admiring God's life. Amen. So God says, it's the 20th year and the beast wow. is now Scattered. He is not coming. He's here. Wow. Come on now. This is not a prophetic word which has come. It's all he's revealing. 2020 means open your eyes now. Wow. Amen. He said the 20th year. Watch what, watch what he said. Go ahead. In the 20th year, I was in Shushan, the palace. Uh huh. Go ahead. That Hanai. One of my brethren came, mm -hmm. he and certain men of Judah, uh -huh. and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. I, says, I, like, this. I like this a little bit. Hold up. He says, and then uh, Hananiah, one of the brethren came, and he concerning the Jew, Ju Judea, and asked them concerning the Jews that escaped, which were uh, left in captivity, concerning Jerusalem. Keep on going. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. Oh, and he said, and they said unto me, the remedy. Say, there's a remedy. There's a remedy. Hallelujah. See, there's a remedy. He says, I want to know, God says, in 2020, what's going on, but I got a remedy. He said, I've been taking y'all on a journey. I've been taking them on a journey. And I've been telling them to see who's going to be disciplined. I've been trying your heart and see if you're both stuck in church or you're stuck with being obedient to my word. Because it's my word where you find rest, not a building. It's my word where you find rest, not things being as usual. I've told you, I'm now, I'm bringing you to my objective. I told you, you know my objective and you know what I'm doing. He says, but well, I want you to open your eyes. He says, now there's a remedy left to He asked him, let me ask about the remedy. So watch this. And Jerusalem, he said, there's a remedy. 
And they said unto me, they said, what did they say? The remnant that are left of the captivity, uh -huh. there in the province, are in great affliction and reproach. Oh, wow. He says, I see, I still have some. He said, I got 7,000. He said, I got 7,000 that I can bow down. But he said, I got a remedy, and they are in great affliction. Wow. Why they are in affliction? Because the remedy can see that the beast has come in. Amen. The remedy sees what's going on. Amen. The remedy is crying. The remedy, why? Because it yes. sees what God has established to stop going on. Come on. See, if you are comfortable now, there's something wrong. Come on now. There's something wrong with your ability to see if yes. you just all right with what's going on. Do you not know every channel and every situation that they are introducing to you to homosexuality and perversion? There is perversion everywhere you There is so much perversion. We have outdone Sodom and Gomorrah. Like, let's go to the women's conference. Let's go to this conference. Let's go to go do this. I'm not saying these things are bad, but what are they preaching? Are they preaching about next year? They preaching about your gain and how far you got blow up? What are they preaching about everything you get ready to get? Or are they opening your eyes to see God like this in their books? Can you see that there is violence? Thank you. You can't see that we murder our own babies. Are we not like the Mobites who sacrifice their children for their own brutality, for their own success? In the in the day of Noah. He said, the stink of violence have come. People, y'all ain't got the news. A woman over by my house, road rage. They just drove by and shot her in the car and kept on riding. They will shoot you and kill you without a thought in their mind. We murdered 1.2 million babies in the abortion clinic. Open? Do you think God gonna sit back? Did he sit back in the day of Noah? Did he sit back in the day of Lot? Do you not understand God's objective was to be still saving? But those, only those who are awake and who can see are moving with urgency. I ain't got no time to be building no big building church. I got to build the kingdom. The harvest is great. The labors of few. Watch this. Y'all are the numbers. I was watching the news. I thought it was interesting on this virus. And they began to show the states. It's like a plague. Moving through the nation. Let me tell you what religious people will tell you. That ain't got nothing to do with God. Then I guess you ain't never read Revelation. You know what the what, what is thing? If I can convince you, see, at first I gotta take you from God's objective. And if I can convince you it ain't got nothing to do with God, then you don't even afraid you know, you just what if we was like Israel? Israel got more. You know Israel got more wisdom than we do? Because when Israel would see stuff like this, they would rent their clothes, put ashes on their face, and begin to pray to the God who can heal the land. Wow. 
We're talking about what God, what God going to do for you. And yet, we need to be willing. We need to be praying and fasting and seeking. Oh, let me, let me, let me show you. Let me show you. Look. Keep reading. The remnant are in great affliction and reproach. The wit, but why is the remnant in great affliction and reproach? Go ahead. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. The what? The gates thereof are burnt with fire. Say, the enemy has free entry. Wow. Oh my God. The watchmen sleep have given the enemy free entry. Jesus. He has free entry into our houses and our wives. He has free entry into the church because nobody's watching and sounding the trumpet. And he's scattering. Sisters are leaving. Sisters, watch this. Sisters are leaving one church and go to another church with nothing but anger in their heart and think that's okay with God. And want to go to the other church and pray and learn. But they go learn with bitterness in their heart toward their sister when the Bible says to strive to keep the unity of the spirit. Amen. The Bible says we know that we have come out of darkness into light in the way that we love the brethren. And yet we sit in the church and have all in our hearts against one another. Hate black people, hate white people, hate Spanish people, hate other females, hate people who did you wrong. Hate, hate, hate. And God says, forgive, forgive, forgive. Amen. For I forgave you. Amen. You know, men of God speaking against other men of God just to increase their church because they want gain. They want prosperity. So they speak against that brother and this preacher reaches that together and you go on, you can see it's all on Facebook. They like, they will chew each other up. Running ads to come to their church instead of just lifting up the name of Jesus in our highways and edges. Turning the house of God into a marketplace. He said, this, he said the walls Anybody find it ironic that the next president said, let's build a wall? No, stop it. Stop. Does anybody find it ironic that the next president said, let's build a wall? And everybody thought, even the church thought that was just as funny. But see, anybody that know about kingdoms would realize only a fool would build a kingdom without a wall. Because you just can't come in a kingdom any way you want to. It's not that you can't come in. You just got to come in correct. Let me help you with God. God says, the way in is straight and narrow. God says, you can't come in all sideways. He said, you got to come in straight and narrow. He said, broad. But yet, the church and people said, no, that's wrong. But Jerusalem the remnant was being afflicted because there was no wall there. And when there is no wall and gates, then when the walls and gates in your and my life are ripped down, the enemy has access to go in and out of your life as he feel like it. See, a wall hinders him from coming to get to you. But the wall is the place of rest. What is the place of rest? He said, he will keep my seventh and not polluted. The place of rest is the covenant of Jesus Christ, the word of God. To be in Christ is your place of rest. To be in Christ, if you were in the ark, you were at a place of rest. You were in the word that God said. So when it was raining outside in the storm, you were sleeping in eat. Because you were in a place of safety. When judgment came, you were in a place of safety. But if you were outside the ark, you were being judged. Look at something. You got to be in Christ. You got to be in Christ. One body in Christ. This is, this is not the name of this church. It is a message to the church. One body in Christ. 
But for, for, for us to get in Christ, he has to deal with you. So you can walk in. God is building this. He is building one body in Christ. Christ means anointing. The anointing does what? So he is destroying the yoke. What yoke? The hindrances inside of you that causes you not to love other people. That causes you not to love you. Some of us in this room, you don't love yourself. Because of how people treated you. And you see yourself through the eyes of your brokenness and your pain and God has to heal you. Amen. Amen. And when you get healed, the woman of God said, I got healed. My whole family, but when I got healed, God delivered me and I got healed. She said, I didn't do a lot of talking as God led me. But y'all see, y'all think she didn't do nothing. No, she said, I did a lot of praying. I prayed as God had me intercede. Because God said, the sincere prayers of the righteous. Stop, some of us need to stop doing so much talking for your husband. Stop, stop doing so much talking for your wife. Stop doing so much talking for your children. Go in your secret place. And he said, if you pray, I will reward you openly. Start praying for your children in your secret place. Start praying. God said, the sincere. He said, I hear your prayers. And God showed her, I don't need your help to bring that transformation. I can do that when you come. Why? All I need you to be is lined up with me. I need you to be lined up on the heart. For he said, my sheep, he said, I know, he know his sheep. Finish reading. Let's finish reading and get ready to go. He said, the walls. Verse 4. And the gates are burnt up. I don't know. He said, the walls and the gates of Jerusalem are burnt up. And the, and the remedy is affliction and being a reproach because the standard of God has been lowered. Do y'all know the day that the young woman that decide, or the young man that decide to, um, to wait till they get married? She's, she's being afflicted and reproached. Not because of the world, because the men and women in the world have seen so many men and women who said they was godly, sleeping with people that now the woman who, the women who really won't do it, she's being slandered and talked about. Because they don't believe the gospel that you say you preach because you can't live it. Amen. And then we want to say, I'm only human. Wow. No, my Bible says you're born again. Amen. And my Bible says you're led by the Spirit, not by your flesh. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. So that only human thing might not work too well with God. Amen. Because you've been transformed. Keep on reading. This is a good part. God rather says, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do. Okay, I hear somebody say, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do. Okay, he saw, look at it, he said, Jerusalem also broke up. He is hearing, go ahead, read it. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept. I did what? I sat down and wept. So when I'm looking at what's going on, am I, we am I weeping? Am I, am I weeping? Or am I just too concerned about what I need and what I want and what I... That I can't see that God's objective should have me weeping. Nehemiah said he sat down and wept when he saw the condition of what was going on. Go ahead. I sat down and wept and mourned certain days. So he sat down and wept and mourned for one day. Certain days. He said, sir, he said, when I see the condition of the beasts that have gone and caused all this separation, I'm not going to back talk, I'm not going to slander, I'm going in the crime before God. Because I know this shouldn't be. Go ahead. And I fasted. And I, fa I began to afflict my own flesh. Amen. Because I realized that these things shouldn't be. Wow. Do y'all know there are certain states, which are names that now have pastors who are who are teaching and they 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 are, are homosexuals and all type of these, these things and you got certain men who are preaching and throwing away their wives and all type of craziness going on and it's like and nobody weeping. 
We just talking. I knew he wasn't saved. Nobody warning or fasting. Amen. Go ahead. And I fasted and prayed before God of heaven. So watch this. I warned, I fasted, and I prayed before God of heaven. I didn't go have a meeting with my sister Bobo and sister. I went straight to God. Amen. Because I knew that's who, because watch this. I knew that the city was met, the condition of the city was messed up. I know America messed up. America is in false company. America has told God, go, I'm done with you. So I'm weeping and crying. I'm going before God saying, God, forgive us. Keep on reading. And I said, I beseech you, O Lord God of heaven. Watch this prayer. Watch this prayer when he prayed. He said, I beseech you, O Lord God of heaven. Go ahead. The great and terrible God. The great. I know you ain't nothing to be played with. In other words, God, you, watch what he said. He said, the great and terrible God. What is he saying? I have seen this. This is the work of your hand, God. What are you saying? He's saying, God, this would have never happened. Something went wrong because I know if you, you, who, if you were in the position that we have put kept you in, this wouldn't be. Something happened, God. That, that this is going on. Something happened. One, come on, let's say, let's say together. One nation. One nation. Under God, Under God. Indivisible. 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 Isn't that isn't that what we say in America? But isn't America now one nation under God's? Now divided? Isn't America right now one nation under God's? Matter of fact, America even hate the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Matter of fact, that you can go to schools and say something about Buddha, Muhammad, but if you say Jesus, wow. but it's the nation, that it, it didn't say one nation under God, go read it. The forefathers of this nation said one nation under God. Under Biden, America. And now, because we have waking up, right, and the seers, who've been seeing destruction, or you've been seeing the right thing, who've been seeing floods, or you've been seeing the right thing, who've been seeing fire, yeah, but it should provoke you to weep and mourn. It should provoke you to go before God and pray. It should provoke you just to say, I had a dream. Go ahead. The God that keepeth covenant and mercy. Oh, 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 he said it too fast. He said the God that does what? Keep the God that does what? Keep America, you done messed up. God is the God that keep what? Covenant. Don't ever play with covenant with God. We were in covenant through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth is a terrible thing to begin to create law. Against the spirit of truth. We don't even realize the magnitude of what we have done. Let me say again. It's a terrible thing to create laws against the very word that creates the covenant. To a God that said, I'm not changing my covenant. I keep my covenant. Go ahead. The God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. He said to them that what? Love him. And do what? Did, someone said, well that's the Old Testament. Tell me if Jesus didn't say, if you love me, you'll keep my word. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what I say. Did he not say that? Amen. He said, if you love me, you're going to do what I say. Wow. So we love him. We should be a people obeying the word of God. Mm -hmm. So guess what? When somebody makes you mad, you should be, be willing to forgive. Yes. Amen. Amen? Amen? When somebody needs something, you should be willing to give. Amen. You should be willing to esteem somebody higher than yourself. Amen. You, should, you should know how to abstain your body, keep your body, possess your body, and keep it holy. Amen. If you love him. 
Amen. I said, but Jesus is the word. Somebody, somebody gonna get it. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my word. Amen. But he's the word. Amen. He said, your love for me is manifested and you do what I say. Amen. Somebody like, I don't know y'all think. Jesus even said, he said, you love me, you do what I say. I'm like, somebody like, they get offended by some People get offended by them in the Bible. They get offended. Who is he to tell me if I love him, I'm going to do what he say? Who is he? I, I don't know, because I had a dude tell me that. I had a dude, I had a couple that was married, he was with me that day. I do those married to mom. Why should I, who was Jesus to tell, he's basically like, who was Jesus to tell us that we should do what he say? <laughs> I looked at him, I said, <laughs> I said, the creator of the heaven and the earth and the sea and the four is the earth. All things made by him before he went down, there was nothing made. That's who he is. <laughs> you ain't got to believe it. Who the man say to God? Okay. He's the son of God. He read. Let thine ear now be attentive. He said, now I need you to listen to God. Go ahead. And thine eyes open. So God, I need your ears and your eyes. Go ahead. That thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant. God, here I'm coming before you. Hear your prayer of your servant. Go ahead. Which I pray before thee now. Go ahead. Day and night. So I'm praying. I'm praying without ceasing. Go ahead. For the children of Israel, thy servants. And confess the sins of the children of Israel. What? Confess the sins of the children of Israel. So in 9-11, did we start confessing our sins to God? In this play, are we crying out? Let's confess our sins. We ain't even say it's got nothing to do with sin. We like to say it got nothing to do with God. But if it did, could it be God telling the nation, you need to repent, you need to sin, you, you out of order? Amen. And the reason why this play, this, watch this, this is so good. The play is in the United States, you can't see it. It's traveling by the airwaves. It's traveling by the airways. Jesus. It is not what? And because the walls in the United States are down and the gate is down, it is now entered into the nation. And now it's in your system and you think you can wash your hands out. But he said, he who has clean hands. <laughs> So you talk about wash your hands with some water. You better wash your hands in the water. Well, the Bible says, touch no unclean thing, and I shall be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. He said, stop touching what you're touching. Stop calling who you call them. Stop going and putting your hands. Get your hands out of his pants. Get your hands out of her pants. Stop touching that dial. For he who has clean hands. It's funny, the first thing they talk about is your hands. They say, don't put, clean your hands repeatedly. Because you can have stuff on your hands and you can't see it. And he says, don't put your hands near your face. Isn't it funny? He said, don't take the dirt and put it toward the gateways. He said, don't take what you plan with and put it toward your gateways. Your eyes, your ears, your mouth. Because if you take it, it can kill you. It can get into your system. He said, this, he said this, let me tell you, God said, this disease is like sin. It is infiltrated in America. And watch this. But I saw mercy and grace. Where did I see it? Because the whole nation wasn't read yet. What am I saying? There was, God said, it's still a place, it's still a remedy for people who ain't got it. Amen. So the ones who ain't got it, what am I showing you? I'm black. He said, you need to start willing and crying. Yeah. We need to start, see this ain't about fasting and seeking God's place, turning our place down and well, see, I could call a 30-day corporate fast, and, but see, that ain't, a, no, this has to be something that you got to do every day. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It's something that you gotta do constantly as you see the situation until we, get, until we see it turn away. 
fast, pray, consecrate. Because people are like, man, I'm going to wash my hands. We need to be washing our hands in the blood and the water of God. Stop using your hands to be talking about people. It says, the wall's down. See, that, that's why I told you, this is not a word to come. It's already. Why? So you got to be able to discern things in the spiritual realm. Yeah. God uses natural things to reveal to you spiritual things. It's a plague. Yeah. And the walls and the gateways of America have come down. Y'all got to get this. They got to get this. Watch this, Pastor. The disease started where? A foreign nation. The same thing, it started in a foreign nation. I want you to see this spiritually. Amen. Come on now. It started in a foreign nation. Come on. But you were mad at the president who was trying to stop. Come on. People were just coming from a foreign nation. Okay. I want you to see it spiritually. Please see it spiritually. God uses the natural and spirit. He gave a president that wanted to build a wall to stop people from coming in. He said, I'm warning you, America, build your wall back up. Close your gates. Because you don't got, because you don't, because why? You, 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 you don't got perverted. You lying, you cheating, you divorcing. We got shows like Bachelor. Where 24 women man just run through a week and we watching this filth and this garbage. We got shows like, what's the one on the island? Survivors. Survivors. Where you get close to somebody just to portray them at the end. Whoa. Sick. There's murdering. And there's sexual perversion. Now, bad girl are homosexual. So your heroes are perverted. Y'all think I'm joking. Even your hero. And now, y'all ever notice, God was showing us, you got to see it in the spirit. God says, you done changed so much that the hero now fighting the hero. Nobody ever thought it was strange that Batman and Superman would fight when they were supposed to, if they, were, they were supposed to be. See, now we, you're going too far. No, I can discern spiritual things. Amen. Now you don't know who the hero. Because now in Twilight, what is it? Not Twilight. Yes, it is. The werewolf sleeping with the vampire. The vampire. <laughs> so now you gotta choose one to be a good, good person. But both of them wicked. Wow. Isn't that just like the devil make them both wicked? And then they can choose one to pretend like they're righteous. Mm -hmm. Does anybody see what God is saying? God is calling for a change. Amen. He is calling for a change. He's saying, America, it's time for a change. There is such hatred. God says, this cannot continue on. He said, in the year 20th, Jerusalem, he said, your walls tore down. He said, the gates are burnt up in Jerusalem. In Isaiah 56, he said, the, the beasts have come into the field, but the watchmen are asleep. God said, when the walls are torn down, and the beasts come into the field, there's no protection for the remnant, for the people anymore. Why? Because they haven't turned away from God's covenant. Now we do what we want to do instead of what God say do. He read. Confess the sins of the children of Israel, which have sinned against thee. He says, it's time. It's, Nehemiah comes to God. He doesn't take a self-righteous stand. Amen. He don't say, well, we Americans. God, we good. See, America has become so prideful. Instead of saying, you know what, God, we have sinned against you. We're going to say, God, forget you. We're going to do what we want to do. 
even though your, your mercy and your grace and your love has kept us all these years, we now, we'll do it the way we want to do it. But Nehemiah, when he saw Jerusalem tore up, when he saw Jerusalem messed up, when he went to God, he said, God, we sinned. Because I know this is the city of God. If it's messed up, it's messed up because we did something to remove your covering. We did something because you've got to understand something. How, how can, if God is for you, who can be against you unless you step from around the protection? It's like this. Come here. Come, come here, Sage. Sage, hurry up. Come here, Sage. Hurry up. Say something. Come here, come here, Papa Bob. As long as Sage, put your hand stay behind her father, he can't touch her. Yeah. If her father go over here, he can afford. See, this is the wall. This is the gate. The father is the wall in the gate. As long as she stay behind her father, America, on. one nation under God, as long as you stay behind the God, the God that gave you favor, the God that, the God that blessed your fields, the God that raised you up, as long as you stay. But as soon as you start thinking you grow in America, as soon as you start thinking you got it going on, and you can do it any way you want to, and you no longer have to answer to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when you can do it on your own. He got, he got a long, come on. Come on, come on. The father talked to one of his messengers. You got that his for. And the father said, I got one loss. Hey, he said, the 99 sheep and one loss. The father's love said, I don't know what man. God's love is not trying to leave you. He's not giving up on America, but he got to shake her up. Why? To wake her up. Amen. And he says, I'm going to send you a messenger. So even while she in the hands of the enemy,
somebody to look past degree, education. I need somebody to look past gender. I need somebody to look to the cross and know that I paid it all. I paid it all. I need somebody who are going to the highways and the hedges. I need somebody who are going to the government. I need somebody that's going to city, to city hall. I need somebody who's going to Washington, D.C. I need somebody who's going to
for builders. I'm looking for builders to rebuild my standard in America. God is about to say next. When Nehemiah went to the king to rebuild Jerusalem, the king gave Nehemiah a sign decree. Thank you. They got to get it. They got to get it. Gotta get it. He gave Nehemiah a sign decree to get everything he needed. Thank you. Let me say it again. Whatever Nehemiah needed, he had the authority. Somebody got it. He had the authority of the king. Whatever Nehemiah needed, he had now had a signed permission from the king that it be released to him.
to relax from it. You want your mama say it? He's a
tonight. I did not come here to entertain you. I didn't come here to get an emotional response. I came here to release the message of God. And I pray that your ears are open to hear. That you position yourself to fulfill, to receive and to fulfill that which God has required of us. Amen. Amen.